Hi, everyone. Yes, I guess uh, everyone are saying yes, uh, we haven't started yet. So we're just about to begin. So once again, welcome to our monthly IDP IELTS writing workshop. I'm Dilep, your host and moderator for today's session. So together with my other co-hosts from other countries, so let me introduce first uh, Patrick from Philippines. Hi, Patrick. Would you like to welcome our participants for today? Are you on mute, Patrick? Um, hi, Ms. Lalet. Good day. And also to our participants who joining this writing webinar. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. And keep your eyes open, your ears and heart to some amazing tips from Ms. Jackie later on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. And also, we have uh, Sarah representing Singapore. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm from IDP Singapore. If you have any questions or concerns, you can just chat it in the Q&A box. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. And I guess each of you have the same reason why you are joining this workshop. Right. So basically, of course, you want to make sure that you are 100% set for your IELTS test, especially in the writing skill. Okay, well, I am excited to share that you are in the right session. Our IELTS expert today will share her best tips and plenty of examples on how to boost your IELTS writing score, whether you're taking academic or general training. As always, we will end the webinar with a short live Q&A session. And if you have any burning questions during the presentation, feel free to drop them in the chat or Q&A box. And if you are joining us via Facebook Live, please write your questions at the comment box and we will try our best to answer them. So finally, please join me in welcoming our IELTS expert today. She has been an IELTS teacher and trainer for more than a decade. Armed with an in-depth understanding of IELTS, she has helped hundreds of people from across Asia to prepare well for it. She enjoys sharing tips and strategies to help test takers like you to reach the band score you need. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Jacqueline Fisher. Hi, Jacqueline. Thanks so much, Lilette. Yeah, it's very nice to be here as always. And hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I see that I've seen people uh, putting uh, messages in the chat saying where they're joining us from. I can see, oh, someone else is in Singapore. Hi, Faizan. <laughs> I can see people from Malaysia and Thailand. Do you want to let me know in the chat where you're joining us from? So this is how we'll really communicate this evening is please feel free to write questions in the chat. We want it to be as interactive as possible. And I'll also ask you questions. So it's not just me talking away. Oh, Batam, Bandung, gosh, from all over the region. It's very nice to have you here. So it looks like I'm um, in Sydney, but I'm really in Singapore. But I don't know if you can tell from my accent, but I was originally out, I'm from Australia. I was born there, but I've lived out of Australia for quite a long time. Yeah, oh, I see people from Philippines. Okay, great, it's lovely to have you here. So tonight, yes, as Lillette said, we're really gonna focus on the writing test. For most people, it's the scariest test. You love the Gold Coast. You know, I've never been to the Gold Coast. I'm from Melbourne, way down in the South where it's very cold right now. Um, yeah, so, so we're really going to focus on the writing test, which I know for many people is the scariest test. Yeah, so this whole session will be looking at all the aspects of the writing. And as Lilette said, I really enjoy giving tips and helping you understand the test a bit more. Oh, some oh, Lai Nguyen, you're in Melbourne. How nice. I hope you're keeping warm. I've heard it's been very cold. Yeah, so um, so really, this is your webinar, so please feel free, as Lilette said, to put your questions in the chat. And at the end, we'll have time, we'll have spend extra time uh, answering questions as well. So as I mentioned, yeah, questions in the chat. And you can put them in the Q&A box, but I won't really see them so readily there. But my wonderful colleagues will answer the questions if you put them in the Q&A box. So the writing test is what we're exploring this evening. Um, I forgot to check with you, Lilette, do we have our poll? ready or not 
if we do, I just want to run the poll and find out a bit more about you. Oh, here it is. Yeah, I just want to find out a bit about you all. So whether you've taken the test before, what's the minimum that you need? Of course, we all want the highest possible, but what's the minimum score you need? Oops. And then also, which test you're planning to take, academic or general? Yeah. Okay. I'll just let it run a little bit more. If you can't see the poll, you can always put it in the chat, whether you're planning to take academic or general and your the minimum score you need. I'll just let it run a little bit longer. So I'm seeing that we have a quite a few more academics. Yeah, but don't worry if you're doing general, we're going to talk about both. So you'll both find out the information that you need. Then I see most people are needing between a six to an eight. Yeah, okay, good. And most people have not done it before, but some people have. So if you have a specific question, you know, maybe you didn't get the, the score you needed and you're wondering why, feel free, this is the place to ask. So let's just share that. Yeah, so most people haven't done it before, needing between six to eight and most are academic. So I guess we've got a lot of very studious people here. So you're probably all very comfortable with writing if you're um, doing academic. Are you? I don't know. Okay, so can you tell me, we're talking about the writing test. How long is the writing test and how many things do you have to do in the writing test? whether it's academic or general. Do you know? And one hour, that's right. And two tasks, yeah, two things you have to do, whether it's academic or general. So that's what we're going to explore tonight. So when you do your IELTS, it's, it's, it's several tests, isn't it? So it's a bit misleading. It's not just one test. So it's listening, then reading, and then writing. And they run back to back. Yeah, so... Um, so if you're doing academic, your task one is that you have to describe something in words and your task two is an essay. And then if you're doing general, your task one is to write a letter, a bit strange these days, and task two again is an essay. So what's the difference? The topics are slightly different for academic and general, but the method or the technique is the same. Yeah, so for academic, the topics are just a bit more academic a bit more abstract yeah okay so i think for a lot of people writing the essay is a bit scary because many of us haven't done that for a long time but it's actually not that not that hard that there's a way to do it that is less intimidating i hope okay so um yeah so the other question i want to ask you is are you planning to do your test computer based or paper based old school way or on computer can you let me know in the chat as well some places they only offer one so that you maybe you don't have a choice yeah so i see a mixture yeah i see quite a mixture there yeah it really so people always ask me which one's better which one's easier and it really depends on you and your skills and what you're comfortable with yeah so the difference the content is exactly the same so the differences are that uh computer you get your results faster, three to five days. And then uh, you can often do it more, like almost every day of the week. Paper-based, it takes a bit longer. Yeah, and then the other, then the difference comes down to you. Are you comfortable typing? Are you comfortable uh, using a mouse? Are you comfortable reading on the screen? Yeah, and when you do listening tests, typing your answers then probably computer delivered would be good. Yeah, but for me, because I'm kind of of the older age group, I would, um, if I were doing IELTS, I'd do uh, paper-based myself because I'm much more comfortable reading on hard copy. Yeah, even though the writing, I can type quite well, but you, you have to do all, you can't mix and match. So I would actually do paper-based myself, but I think it really depends how old you are. <laughs> and also, of course, it depends on, you know, what's offered. All right, so let's get into it. So let's start thinking about your writing and what the examiners are looking at. When you write, they only care about four things. 
Yeah, they actually don't care how neat your writing is, as long as it's readable. Do you know what are the four areas that they're looking at, the four things? It's really important to know these so we can keep thinking about them when we write. Does anyone know, want to put in the chat? Your Lexus, yep, your vocab is one of them. Your grammar, definitely, grammar is important. Yeah, I see someone's put uh, TRCC, what does that mean? Coherence, that's right, and answering the question. Yep, you've got them all, I think. Let's go through them. So the first one is what we call task achievement and task response. So that means basically, did you answer the question and did you stay on the topic and did you answer fully? Yes, that's the first thing they look at. So in IELTS, one of my biggest tips for every single IELTS test is just follow the instructions. A lot of people, because they're nervous and they panic, they don't read the instructions properly. And then this will affect your score. A lot of IELTS is about following instructions and it really, that's really relevant in the writing as well. Okay, next one we look at is cohesion and coherence. What does it mean? Well, first of all, it means paragraphs. So you're writing in IELTS, you must have paragraphs. They're nice, clear, separate paragraphs. Each paragraph, it should be clear what it's about. Yeah, and usually paragraphs are four to maybe eight lines maximum. Don't make like a 15 line paragraph that's too long. And a two line paragraph, that's too short. So, you know, between four, six, eight lines is, is fine. And then cohesion is like, how does it flow? How does it link? Okay, so using your linking words to guide the reader through is very important. Okay, next one. So that's the second one. Next one, as you said, is your Lexus. So this is your vocab, your words that you use. So if you're aiming for seven or higher, you need to use some words that will impress the examiner, something unusual. Yeah, and you've got to remember that this is, well, for the essay particularly, it's more formal writing. So we don't want to use like slang, you want to use more formal words as well. And then also under the vocab is your spelling. Even if you use do computer based, there's no spell check. <laughs> so we most of us, many of us don't have good spelling anymore. So you really have to work on your spelling because there's no spell check. And that comes under vocab. And then the last one is your grammar. So this does matter. It has two aspects. So of course, being correct, if you want a seven, it should be about 70 to 75% correct. An eight, probably 85% correct. And then a nine, in IELTS, nine is perfect, perfect score. So uh, nine would mean no grammar mistakes. But then it's not just being correct, it's also this word, range. Because if I say, I like Singapore, it is humid. Okay, though they were two correct sentences, but they're very simple sentences, aren't they? So that's not very much range. But if I say, although I love Singapore, it tends to be humid. Oh, that's much better. It's one longer sentence with although, what we say two clauses. Yeah, so that's what you need to try to do. Use things like although, however, whereas, despite, even though, all those things. So there, these are our four areas that we have to keep thinking about. Also under your grammar is your punctuation, full stops, capital letters, commas. We must remember this, which we do also tend to forget because of texting. Okay, so why is, why is this so important? This is how the examiner marks you. They look at each of these four, they mark it out of nine. So it's an average. So to get a seven, which is good in IELTS, you need seven for answering the question. You need seven, good for your structure, your paragraphs, your linkers. You need good seven for your vocab and good for the grammar. Yeah, so as soon as you get a six, like seven, 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 six, it will pull it down to a 6.5. So you need to understand what you're good at and what, which areas you need to work at. And when we write, we have to keep thinking of these four things. So we impress the examiner. So we're gonna keep talking about these four as we go through this evening. Okay, so that's how we, how we score the writing. All right, so we're gonna talk first about the general task one. 
Okay, so for if you're doing academic, which is a lot of you, you can go get a snack, have a drink, and come back in about 10 minutes or so. Yeah, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, so in general, people, you stay here. But of course, if you're doing academic and you want to listen to this, of course you can, but it's not academic we're talking about now. We're talking about general, just task one. Okay, so remind me you who are doing general, what are you doing for your task one? What is it? What are you writing? What are you writing? It's a letter, that's right. Yes, you're writing a letter. Now, how many words and how long should you spend? It's 150 words and you have, how long? About 20 minutes. Now, nobody tells you, okay, time's up, move on. You must manage your time, okay? But don't spend too long on the letter because it's actually not worth as much. Task one is not worth as much. All right, so with your letter, the idea is that we want to do it well and we want to do it fast. The letter always looks like this. It's, it's set out this way. Um, and there are three things you've got to think about when you write the letter, okay? So let's just have a quick look. It always tells you how to start. Begin, dear sir or madam. Just follow that, don't change it. Remember, follow the instructions. There have been some problems with public transport in your area recently. Write a letter to the manager of the public transport company. In your letter, describe the problems, explain how the problems are affecting the public, suggest what changes could be made. So this is, that always looks like this. There's a description of what's going on. Then there's the task, what you need to do. And then there are these subtasks. How many subtasks? There are always, how many? There are always three, okay? So yeah, always three bullet points. All right, so it will always look like this. Of course, the topics are different. Now, remember I said you have three jobs. Job number one, is to look at how you start and who you're writing to. Who are we writing to? Manager of public transport company. So that will give us our tone. So what's our tone here? Like what kind of tone should we have? We're, it's dear sir or madam, so we don't know them. And they're the manager of a, yes. Yeah, so it should be more formal, that's right. So we have to get the tone correct. Okay, that's the first thing. Next job, so always work out the tone. Next job is work out why. Why are we writing this letter? The overall purpose. And that will be up here at the top. There have been some problems with public transport in your area. Usually we can state the purpose with two. Why are we writing? To do what? To, to what? To bring up problems with public transport or to discuss issues with public transport. One thing with the letter is it's good to try to change the words here. Don't copy them. This is part of vocab because it shows you can think of your own synonyms, right? Okay, so we had our tone. We had our purpose. Third job is we have to read these bullets carefully. Describe the problems. Note the S. Can we just talk about one problem? We have to think. So in the letter, you have to use your imagination a little bit. We have to think of what these problems, more than one, could be. Could be a traffic jam, exactly, Faison. Explain how the problems are affecting the public. Yeah, so how are the problems affecting people? Problems, so it should be two effects. And suggest what changes, again, more than one change, could be made. So these are our three things we have to do in the letter. Okay, so every time you get a letter, you always do this before you write. Work out the purpose is at the top. Read the bullet points carefully and think about your tone. Okay, so let's have a look at the model. So as remember, they told us to start dear sir or madam, so that's done. Now, can you see the purpose? The purpose should always be in the first paragraph. I'm a resident of Newtown. I'm writing to draw your attention to recent problems with public transport in our suburb. Where's the, um, yeah, I see you see road construction. That's a good problem as well. So where's, where's the purpose in this first paragraph? Can you spot the purpose? Why the person is writing? Can you spot it? I am writing to draw your attention to recent problems. Yes. 
So in this more formal letter, it's good to say who you are, not your name, but give some background first. I am a resident, so that's some background or context. And I am writing to draw your attention. So then you give the purpose. So that's your first paragraph, a bit of background and the purpose. Next paragraph is the first bullet, the problems. So that here is where you can use your linking words to introduce the problems. Can you see the two linking words that introduce the problems? Can you spot the linking words? Here's one, briefly, yep. And there's the second, where's the second linking word? Furthermore, so this is good to do this. Use your linkers to introduce the problem. So let's see what the problems are. Briefly, roadworks along Hill Road have led to long delays. So that's one problem. Furthermore, new weekend bus timetable has dramatically reduced the frequency of buses. So they're the two problems. Now notice that these problems are real. It's very important when you write the letter, it has to sound real. Like you would really send that if you were living in Canada or the UK or wherever. Yeah, it has to sound, you can't make up like things like, oh, there are little pixies getting on the bus and pinching people. Don't do that because it, you, it won't get you a good mark, even though it's very creative. Yeah, it needs to sound real. Okay, so that was our first bullet point, the problems. Now, next bullet point is the effect. Notice that we have a topic sentence. So we say what the paragraph is about. The effect of these actions becomes very obvious during peak hours on weekends and busy shopping hours. Yeah, so here's one effect. The public transport users find it takes 20 minutes more to travel. And here's a linking word introducing the second effect. Shoppers who travel by bus uh, find it not worth the trouble, leading to a drastic downturn in retail trade. Now, in this paragraph, we have some nice vocabulary. Remember, the examiner is looking at your vocab. So in the letter, you have to use real vocab that sounds natural, like you would really use it, like not really fancy old fashioned words, but very natural. But you can try to use something more unusual. Can you spot some nice vocab here? No, there's a few nice words. Yes, but before that drastic downturn, that's very nice. Not worth the trouble. How about public, high level of public concern? Yeah, you, you could just say, oh, people are upset. But this is, sounds better, doesn't it? There is a high level of public concern. Yeah, so this is good, good vocabulary. Now, our third bullet point were the suggestions, more than one. Can you see the linker to introduce the second suggestion? So the first suggestion, may I suggest that buses be rerouted along Great East Road? Can you see the linker? to introduce the second, yes, I would also recommend a return to the old weekend timetable. So you notice that the suggestions are also very realistic. I'm sure these steps would be warmly welcomed. Okay, so there, that's the next paragraph. And the last paragraph, we just point to the next step. I look forward to hearing from you regarding my suggestions. And don't forget to sign off. We had dear sir or madam. So a good sign off matching tone, yours faithfully. And then your name, because it's a letter, don't forget the name. So usually the letter has five paragraphs like this. So we have the purpose, bullet point one, bullet point two, bullet point three, point to the next step, and then sign off. So the letter is actually not that difficult to do. But be careful, if you don't, if you forget one bullet point, like you forgot the suggestions, it pulls your score way down. Under the task achievement, you'll get a four. And then if you've got to keep your tone the same. So notice that this was more formal. You didn't suddenly, you know, switch to like, hey guys, or something like that. Yeah, it was all the same kind of tone. So if your tone is not consistent, you will get five. Yeah, so the tone is really important. Okay, so just remember with the letter, we've got to find the purpose. We've got to see who we're writing to. So we get the tone. We've got to look at the bullet points carefully. And usually there are five paragraphs. So let's practice identifying the purpose. This is an easy one. So you, in it, your instructions, they say you want your friend to come to your su partner's surprise party. What's our purpose? Why are we writing this letter? What are we doing? 
what's our overall purpose yes an invitation we're to invite someone yeah so often we can state the purpose with a two yeah that's right and then how about this one these are two quite easy ones you recently stayed in a hotel and the service was most unsatisfactory so what's our purpose for writing here what are we going to do yeah so we want to complain or we want to express disappointment so be careful with complaining if your letter is like that it's still got to sound real yeah don't make it so over the top and unnatural it's always got you always have to imagine that you would really send the letter okay now thinking about tone this is important so if we think about that birthday party inviting the partner Dear Anne, I request the pleasure of your attendance at the birthday party that I will host for my longtime partner. I would very much appreciate it if you could keep this invitation a secret as it will be a surprise party. How do you feel about that tone? Who are you writing to? It's too formal, that's right, it's to a friend. This is, would be maybe okay for a very formal event, but not a surprise party. Okay, so see this tone and feel the difference. Dear Anne, I hope all is well. I'm not sure if you remember, but Danny's big birthday is around the corner. Yes, he's going to hit the big four zero. He says he doesn't want a party, but that's too bad because I'm hoping you'll be part of the super secret surprise bash I'm organizing for him. Can you feel the difference in the tone? Can you see that it's like, when it's an informal tone like this, it sounds like someone's talking. Of course, we wouldn't send a letter. It's like, it's weird to send a letter, I know that, but we have to, we have to write it like a letter. So the secret is that you imagine that you're talking, but put it into full sentences. You must write full sentences in the letter, no bullet points. Now, in the informal letter, we can do this. I'm, he's, doesn't, what we call contractions. It makes it informal and chatty. Yeah, so if you get an informal letter, please be careful and make the tone very uh, like you're speaking. Yep. Okay, now let's look at this one. So this is the one with the complaining. I'm very sorry about this, but I really do have to complain about the service I received at your hotel last week. What's a bit strange about that tone? A contraction's okay for semi-formal letter. So Claire, it really depends who you're writing to. So if it were, for example, you're writing to your neighbor, and maybe you don't know them very well but you know them a bit then maybe that's okay or if you're writing to your tutor but if you're told to use dear sir or madam i don't use contractions because that's too formal for contractions but if it's a name dear dot 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 then maybe it depends on who you're writing to and who they are i mean yeah and you yeah depends on the, the situation okay so what's wrong with this tone yeah, it's kind of informal. That's it's so it's not so informal, but there's something weird about it. It's too apologetic. Okay, so this hotel has has given very bad service, but you're apologizing. So that's weird. So th notice this one. I'm writing to express my disappointment about the service I received at my stay during my stay at your hotel. Can you feel the difference? This is much more cool detached, serious. Yeah, so getting the tone right is important. Now, the other thing you've got to think about is because you have to write how many words? 150. So sometimes people add in details so that they hit 150, but it sounds weird and it's irrelevant. So if you have a quick look at this one, can you spot some information that's irrelevant? There's something in the first sentence and there's something in the second sentence so don't just add information that makes it sound funny strange yeah the talking to your plants part is weird like i i want to apply for this position and it was in the newspaper next to the article who cares yeah don't do things like that and maybe this part about i'm studying literature my favorite book is lord of the rings that might it's like kind of too much even if it's a bookshop it's probably too much detail right it, I mean, this could be relevant if you're applying for a job in a bookshop, maybe, then to say you're studying literature, is it? it is relevant. Yeah, okay, so let's look at one more with, and we'll analyze it like we have been. You're going on holiday and would like to ask a friend to look after your house, write a letter to your friend, 
explain the situation, tell your friend what needs to be done while you're away, arrange to meet your friend. Now we're told to start dear dot, dot, dot. So what do we do? Who are we writing to? Friend. So what's our tone? So we'll always work out the tone first. What's our tone? Friendly, informal, exactly. So dear dot, 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 you just make up a name, but of course it won't be dear Miss Smith, will it? Because <laughs> it's your friend. All right, so purpose, purpose is up here. You are going on holiday, would like to ask a friend to look after your house. Why are we writing the overall purpose? To, to do what? To, why are we writing? To, yeah, to ask for a favor, exactly. Okay, and then let the bullets, this is quite straightforward. Explain, tell your friend what needs to be done, arrange to meet your friends. It's quite straightforward, this one. So let's look at the model. So dear Jane, then the closing, it needs to match. So yours sincerely would be too formal. So you could put uh, by, if you don't like cheers, that's quite Australian, because we like a beer. So um, you could put uh, bye for now, see you soon, lots of love, all of that is fine. So yeah, but just, you know, very friendly. Now, be careful with the purpose, because if you said, dear Jane, I am writing to ask you for a favor. How would you feel if you read that? You'd be like, whoa, man, I thought you're my friend. That's too blunt. Yeah, so you have to build, if it's to a friend and you're asking for something, you have to build up to it. You have to get to the purpose uh, more kind of around the bout. Let's have a look. How is everything? I hope you're having a great week. So you can put a greeting. As you know, I'm heading off to England next week. Sorry, on holiday next Monday for three glorious weeks. I'm wondering if you might be free to do me a huge favor. You see, only introducing the purpose here. Yeah, so there's some a greeting and some background and then the favor, but in a very gentle way. I'm wondering if you might be free to do me a huge favor. I'd be super grateful if you could look after the house. Yeah. And then, so the detail about what there is to do, what you have to do, but notice it sounds like talking. There isn't really much to do, so don't worry. It'd be fantastic if you could feed my cat, Moggy. Yeah, and then trying to put in some interesting vocab. So here, while you're at the house, it'd be wonderful if you could check on my check my plants and give them a drink if they're looking droopy or parched. You know, trying to put in some interesting vocab. Yeah, so would you be free to meet on Wednesday? So we've got to think about our grammar. So more interesting grammar. So here there's a while. There's a would, would is would, could, should, that's all considered more complex grammar. Would you be free? I'm pretty sure you don't have any classes. We could also grab, yeah. And then the last paragraph pointing to the next step. Could you give me a call to let me know if this won't be too much of a hassle? It'll be great to see you. See, the tone is very friendly. Okay. In a way the informal letter is a bit harder to do because we wouldn't really write a letter, yeah? But the secret is to just write it like you're talking, but full sentences. Okay, some overall tips. So make sure you do what we just did. Look for the tone, the purpose, the bullets. Careful, are there plural bullets like problems? The purpose is the first paragraph. You must have paragraphs, so usually five paragraphs in the letter. The last one, we look to the future. <clears throat> Get your tone right. Okay, very important and make sure it's the same all the way through. Try not to copy the words in the topic. We wanna to try to use synonyms and just start as, the, as they tell you. So dear sir or madam or dear Jane or whoever. You don't need to put any kind of address. You just start dear like that. And remember to match. So if it's dear Jane, then bye for now. See you soon, that kind of thing. Okay, so before we switch to academic I've got a little um, quiz just to see if you were listening is that ready the the poll for the general task one yeah okay see if you can answer these questions which three things do you need to think about for the general or an informal letter it's fine if you use texting language mm. It's fine if the letter doesn't sound realistic, as long as you lose a lot of impressive vocab. It's okay if you use contractions in an informal letter. 
And in a formal letter, you should use very formal phrases. Some of these are trick questions. Oh, nobody's doing the poll. The poll didn't show up. Oh no, maybe we can run the poll again. Can we run the poll again? I, I saw it. I'm the only one who saw it. <laughs> I was wondering why did we? Hmm? Yep, yep. Oh, okay. No worries. Uh, I wonder why. Just for a second. Oh, it's a mystery poll. Maybe I'll ask you the questions. Okay, so let me just ask you anyway. Do you think you can use texting language like lol, ROFL? Is that okay? To use texting language? Yeah, no, you can't. They have to be proper words. Oh, here it is. Is it, is it, is it? Is it there? Can you see it? Woohoo! Okay. Yes. Okay, good, good. Sorry. Sorry, team. Put make me stress out. Good, good. And then if you can't see the poll, then I'll just yeah, so you have to. And so we're also saying that in a in a informal letter, is it okay? Oh, here we go. I'll just give you a couple of minutes. So do you have if you have any questions, general people, please ask. And after this, you can have a little break, go and get a drink or a snack, and come back in about 15 minutes because we're going to talk about the essay. And the essay is the most important part, right? Yeah, okay. So maybe I'll end the poll or just let a few more people answer it because we don't have so many general people, so we won't get so many answers. Okay, let me end the poll. Let's go through it. So the three things you have to think about, yes, purpose, tone, and all the three bullets, that's right. British spelling, actually, that's a trick. You can use American or British, it doesn't matter. It's an international English test. Long sentences, of course, if you can use long sentences correctly, sure, but it's not, you, it's not like a must. It depends what band score you need. Uh, and then, so texting language is not okay. No, you have to use real words in the, le in the letter. Uh, yeah, so remember I said it has to sound realistic. That's very important. So don't just throw in these big words if it doesn't sound real. You have to imagine that you'd really send the letter. Okay, then in an informal letter, yeah, you can use you can use can't, don't, hasn't. Yes, it's good. It makes it sound more informal. And then in an informal letter, this is a trick question. Don't use really formal old fashioned words like, you know, my esteemed sir, or I, I am your honorable servant, something like that. Don't do that. It has to sound modern. Yeah, modern. If you can use words like, remember drastic downturn, that was great. But don't put in these very fancy phrases that, that, doesn't sound natural that's the most important thing is a mixture of american and british yeah you can do that if you want to it doesn't matter yep no problem okay oh you're academic and you did the poll no worries good for you all good all right so academic people it's your turn now so generals you can go grab a drink come back in about 15 minutes all right academic people please tell me what you're doing for your task one <gasps> You have a bit of a harder job, I've got to say. But some people love task one academic, really depends. Mm. You are describing data. That's right. Some people love this. Personally, I don't love it. But anyway, and how many words and how long are you spending? Yeah, you don't like it either. <laughs> it's awesome. It's okay. It's just not my favorite thing. All right. So 150 words and 20 minutes. That's right. So this is your challenge a bit with your task one academic is that you've got to really try to do it in 20 minutes because it's not worth as much as your essay. Okay. So don't get stuck on it. Um, yeah. So I see Grace is saying she spent more than 30 minutes. See, that's, you don't want to do that because that's like, it's not worth as much. All right. So we have to describe something. That's right. We have to describe something visual using words. So in a way, the examiner could then read what you wrote and draw it. That's the idea. Yeah, so let's have a look at what it's like. So sometimes you're given two things and often it's just one thing, but it's the same. So don't panic if you get two things. It's still the same method. All right, so there. remember you don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to talk you through it. 
So in the, in the task one academic, this bit here, this is always your job. Summarize what's going on, pull out the main things, the main trends and compare. So you always have to do this. Summarize, point out the main trends and compare. Okay, so we have to spend a little bit of time understanding what's going on. So maybe two minutes understanding or one minute maybe. All right, so how do we do that? First, we read what we're looking at. The charts show number of Japanese tourists traveling abroad between 1985 and 1995 and Australia's share of the Japanese tourist market. Okay, so the first thing I always ask myself is what time are we talking about? Is it the past? Often it's the past, but not always. So what is this one? Was it past? Yes, right? So that's going to affect our language. Okay, so it's in the past. I always just check that. Now I have to understand what's going on. So now I look at these and I ask myself a series of questions. So I'll ask you. So this is Japanese tourists going overseas, right? So I look at the vertical, millions. So be careful, it's not 246, it's 6 million. So be careful and here's the years, 10 years. Now, overall in this graph, is the overall trend up or down? Up or down? So always ask yourself that. It's up, right? I mean, some changes, but start to end is up. Okay, now we look in detail. So when it's a graph, always look at the start first. A good word to use is approximately. So how many Japanese tourists going overseas in 1985? Approximately. If you use approximately, no one can tell you you're wrong. About 5 million, right? Yes. Now, what about at the end? So we look at the start, then we look at the end. How many in 1995? Yeah, around about 15 million, exactly. So quite a big jump. All right, good. Now, we also have to look for the peak, the highest point. Which year is the peak, the highest point? Also 1995 here, that's right. Now, are there any other years that something interesting happened that we might we want to highlight? Remember, we pull out the main trends. Which year might, yes, then we want to talk about this, right? So when it's kind of the same trend, it's going up, 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 you do not need to talk about every year. In fact, you shouldn't. When it's the same trend, you can describe how it's going up. How is this increasing? What would you say? I mean, you can say it's increasing, but that's not very interesting. How is it increasing? Gradually? Yeah. Steadily? Yeah, that's right. Not noticeably. I mean, it went from four to 11 within five years. That's, that's I think it's more than gradually. That's quite noticeably or steadily. Yeah. I don't know if it's dramatically. I think dramatically would be more like, boo. But it, it's quite significant, I think, yes. Now, look, 1990, what happened? Do, do. So we're going to need to talk about this because the trend changed. So we do need to highlight this. You might want to talk about this because it's kind of the same, but then it started going up again. So we don't need to talk about each year. Yeah? So, but we will need to highlight this one. Okay, good. So we know what we're talking about for this graph. Let's talk about this one, Australia's share. So how many went to Australia? So again, we look at vertical. Now it's not, it's not uh, millions now, it is percent. So be careful, always check what you're looking at. So this is percent and again, years. So overall, is it up or is it down overall? Up or down? Yeah, again, it's up overall. Now we look at the start, all oh, very low, just 2%. Then we look at the end, where are we up to here? What number? in 1995 yeah just under six maybe yeah around about six and then where's the peak here which year is the peak yeah so this is the end is not the peak it's not always the peak so this is the peak yeah so that's about six any other year that we will be interesting to highlight yeah this year right we want to talk about this as well good so now you've picked out your main points yeah, so now we want to start writing because we've only got 20 minutes. Good. So when we write, we have to think about our introduction. We need an introduction. We need to pull out all the information, the important information with lots of numbers. And we need this thing called an overview. Okay, so let's see how we do that. 
So introduction, the fastest way is to paraphrase. So what does that mean? We just change the words. So the charts, the chart and graph, show, compare, the number of Japanese tourists, the number of Japanese who spent their holidays overseas. So you just rewrite it with different words. That's the fastest way to do the introduction. Okay. Now, next, we do the overview. So the overview is we describe everything that's going on, but let me read it to you first. Overall, usually we start with overall or in general. Overall, despite the relatively small proportion of Japanese tourists coming to Australia, right? The Japanese tourist market corresponded closely with the growth in Japanese tourism overseas generally, with a trebling of both in the 10 year period. Okay, so in this, description are there is there any actual data any numbers no right there's 10 year period but we don't know which 10 years yeah so in the overview you do not have any data you just describe everything with no numbers the main trends you must have this paragraph the examiner is looking for it yeah so that's the overview so um, next, we have to, so we've got our introduction, our overview. Now we have to describe with lots of numbers. So the examiner could read what you wrote and draw from your description. That's what you're aiming for. Now, when you have two things, the easiest way to do it is just describe one and then describe the other. Don't try to describe both at the same time. It's a nightmare. Just do one and then do the other. Okay, let's see. So in 1985, only about 5 million Japanese traveled abroad, after which the number increased steadily. By 1990, the figure had more than doubled to 11 million. Apart from a slight drop the following year to approximately 10 million, the upward trend continued until the end of the period when numbers reached over 15 million. Okay, so can you see that we've included all the numbers? So you can't just say it increased, it doubled. You have to say from what to what so that the examiner could could draw it. Yeah, so that's really important. And notice we said the nice, interesting ways to describe. So increase steadily. Yeah, slight drop. This is very good to use. Upward trend continued. OK, now there's one more job that we have to do. Do you remember I said there's three jobs? Compare. So you have to compare what's happening. Can you spot any comparing language here? In this first paragraph, comparing language like before and doubled. Yeah, doubled you could say is comparing. While is down here, but how about after which? So this happened before, after which? And what about in there's another one in this first paragraph, another comparing word. Apart from, that's right. So this and then this, comparing things. You've got to have this comparing language. Other examples like in comparison, in contrast, similarly, yeah, things like that. Okay, so we've described this one, now this one. While Australia was the destination for under 2% of Japanese tourists in 1985, this per percentage had risen to over 6% by 1994. That's the peak, isn't it? The proportion grew consistently apart from a slight fall in 1990, yeah, 4.5 to 4. So we said what it was. After reaching its 1994 peak, the percentage declined marginally to 6% in 1995. Yeah, so again, we've pulled out all the important uh, things. So you can see that, um, again, the nice vocab, slight fall. Can you spot any of the other? nice descriptions of numbers there's two there are two other nice ones in the last line there's one decline marginally that's very nice grew consistently and can you spot the comparing language we have while here what else do we have apart from again yeah exactly so this is good we're covering all the requirements of the task so let's just look at it all together so we have the introduction we Rewrite the topic, overview, describe everything with no numbers, just the main trends. Then we describe the first graph, lots of numbers, and then the second graph, lots of numbers. Notice we don't need a conclusion. 
Yeah, you can just finish. So that's really how you do it, no matter what the topic is. Now, the only thing is sometimes it's not a graph. This is the challenging thing with your academic task one. Sometimes you get this, a table, but the technique is the same. So don't panic. And what you when it when it comes to a table or the other kinds of things you have to describe, actually even with a graph usually, look for the things that are the same and the things that are different. You have to think about how you want to group your information. Yeah, put the ones that are the same, same trend together and the ones that are different together. Okay, so let's have a look. Same thing, the table shows the percentage of students who attended different types of secondary schools between 2000 and 2009. So is it passed? Yes. So again, this is always the same, summarize, select and report main features and compare, always the same job. So now we have to understand the trends. So we have to look at this. We have how many schools? Four, right? And we have three years. So let's see, specialist schools, what is the trend, up or down? 12, 11, 10, down, but just marginally, right? Only 2% drop. Grammar schools, what happened? Yeah, so we can say it dropped from 24 to 12, but what's another way of saying that? 24 to 12, you have to do a bit of math. <laughs> it halved, yeah, we have to say from 24. So you could say it started at 24% and halved, and then the examiner would know, oh, that's 12. Okay, so sometimes you can describe it in a more interesting way. The volunteer schools, 52%, whoa. So it plummeted, didn't it? So less than half. And then community schools, yes, they went the other way. So 12, it's almost increased almost five times. Okay, so that's how we're going to describe it. We're gonna talk about these three that dropped together and we'll talk about the one that went up by itself. Okay, so that's how we'll organize, but you have to spend time understanding what's going on. So let's have a look at a model. So when you're learning to do your task one academic, it is good to look at these models so that you start to understand how, how they're structuring it, yeah? So the table illustrates the percentage of, sorry, of school children attending four different types of secondary school from 2000 to 2009. So just rewrote the topic. Here's the overview. In general, we can see that specialist grammar and voluntary controlled schools experience declines whereas community schools became the largest providers of secondary school education. Any numbers in this overview? No, right, no numbers. Can you see a nice, a nice um, comparing word in this overview? There's a nice comparing word, a good one to use. Whereas, yes, okay. So now we just describe with lots of numbers, we describe all the ones that fell. To begin, the proportion in voluntary controlled schools fell from just over half to only 20%, yeah, 52 to 20, uh, from 2000 to 2009. So remember the years, we have to have the years. Similarly, oh, that's a nice comparing word. The relative number of children in grammar schools, which was just under one quarter, dropped by half in the same period. So that's an interesting way to describe it, isn't it? Instead of saying 24, they said just under one quarter, dropped by half. As for the special schools, a relatively small percentage of pupils attending this type of school, which is 12%, also fell, though not significantly, okay? So just to 10. However, while the other three types of schools declined in importance, the opportunity opposite was true of community schools. In fact, while only a small minority of 12% were educated in these schools in 2000, the figure increased to well over half. Yeah, so that's it. Just describing what you see. Now, sometimes this is why task one academic can be a little challenging. Sometimes you get this. Don't panic. Oh, there's a couple of questions here. Is it better to use we can see that or it can be seen that? Um, you can use either. Some people would say that it can be seen that is better because it's passive and it's a bit more formal. But if you, if you prefer to use we can see, that's also okay. It's not wrong. Uh, whereas and however have the same meaning. Yeah, however and whereas have the same, but it's good to use different words. So you don't just always use however, try to have a range. Remember a range is good. Um, anyway, so um, process. Now don't panic if you have a process. 
it's actually easier, I think. All you do with a process is you actually have to describe everything that you see. The challenge is to try to change the form of the word if you can. But process is just step by step by step by step by step. It's a sequence. I don't think process is hard. I think process is easy. <laughs> maybe that's just me because I'm not good with numbers. So maybe I prefer process. So what do you do? Okay, again, same thing. The diagram shows the process by which bricks are manufactured. Okay, same thing here. Summarize, select and compare. Okay, so we have to spend a minute or so understanding this process. So look, we have a digger. What does it do? Dig up the clay. Then it goes here. The clay goes through a metal grid onto a roller. Sand and water are added. Then there's two options. So it can be cut, the mixture can be cut with a wire cutter to make bricks or can go in a mold and make bricks. Then into the drying oven. So 24 to 48 hours, how could we say that in a different way, a synonym? Yeah, one to two days. So that would be good, wouldn't it? So then it goes into this kiln. So we have to mention moderate and high temperature, then cooling, again, two to three days, then it's packaged and delivered. Can you see what I'm doing here? It's packaged and delivered. So I'm changing the form of the word. This is good to do. And we often use a lot of passive in the process because we wouldn't say, oh, people package it. It sounds funny. So it is packaged, it is delivered. Okay, so the challenge with the um, process is that some people just sort of say, and then, and then, and then, and it's a bit boring. So you try to think of different ways. So following this, the next step, subsequently, so try to use a range of uh, phrases to show steps. Okay, but it's, that's it, that's all you do. Oh, and just the, pros, the, the overview. People are like, how do I do the overview? Easy, just count how many steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Approximately seven steps, beginning with digging up the clay, ending with delivery. You can also break it into the different parts. So you could say, you know, the first phase is digging and molding, and then there's drying, and then there's packing, something like that. You can sort of summarize it very briefly. Okay, so here's another model. So it shows, so the introduction, you just paraphrase. The diagram outlines how bricks are manufactured. And then we just go through first raw clay is extracted from a quarry by a large digger. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. And then here's that sometimes people put the overview at the end. You can do that if you prefer. I prefer it up here, but you can put it at the bottom if you want. Overall brick making process comprises seven steps. These steps involve different processes, namely refining and forming the raw clay, drying the clay and firing. Yeah, exactly. You can divide it into three parts. That would be great. Input, process, output. Exactly. Yep, good. Yeah, so that's your academic task, task one. And I know it takes a while to get used to doing it. Look at models. This will help you learn the right way to do it. You've got to hit your 150. You must have that overview and then spend time analyzing so you know what's important to talk about. When you describe the data, you've got to have lots of numbers, but the overview has no numbers. Then don't forget to compare. Similarly, um, whereas, however, apart from, all of that. And these become your linking words to make it flow. Usually the task one academic maybe has four, maybe three paragraphs. Now checking for mistakes, I'm gonna talk about that later. Now be careful, you've got to, you can't just say it rose, it fell, right? Remember you wanna say it rose gradually, it rose significantly, but also the numbers from this to this. Now you never want to interpret, okay? So you don't wanna say, oh, lots of Japanese tourists are going to Australia because they wanna drink beer. Never do that. Just describe what you see. You never interpret. And we don't have to describe every detail, right? Just the main trends, except for process. Process, you do have to describe everything. Yeah, and we must have that overview. Okay. Good. How, what if you have fluctuate in the table? Okay, so if you have, there's no pattern, then you can say it fluctuated. Yeah, but usually they don't make it so it's totally fluctuating. 
there'll be some trend like it will increase and decrease then it might fluctuate a bit yeah yeah writing is challenging i agree it takes time yeah and you've got to learn what they're looking for but to learn what the IELTS want you to do. So let's, can we have the poll? Like this is the little quiz about task one academic. And then we've got to get going on our task two. So I'm not, I think this webinar, I'm not sure if it's being recorded. Maybe you can ask the team. I'm, I'm not really sure what they do about that. It's available in uh, IELTS Facebook Live. Ah, course, okay. Uh, yeah, seven it's on, it's on IELTS, IELTS yeah. Facebook. Yeah, so, so you can later get it on, uh, within uh, 24 to 48 hours, they will receive an email with the link if they want to rewatch the session. Woohoo! Okay, so that's good to know. Thank you, Lilette. <laughs> All You're right. Welcome. Oh, has the poll gone off again? I think it's there. Um, I see people it's, doing it. Yeah, they are it's still, still running. running now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Running. I'm just going to let it go a little longer. So, we're going to talk about the essay next okay so i hope all the general people are back because this is the most important part of your writing test i know task one takes a while to talk about but really the essay task two is what you really want to focus on okay so i'm just going to end the poll let's just quickly review which of these tasks should you not include yeah you should not interpret do not explain why just describe what you see good it's important to cover every piece of data. So no, except in the process. But the others, you just pick out the main trends. Do you need a conclusion? Yeah, you don't need one, it's optional. If you want a conclusion because you need more words, then you can just summarize everything again, but you don't need a conclusion. Okay, good, great. So, um, so let's get on and talk about the essay. Now, how many words do you have to write for this essay? Please tell me, and how long should you spend? This is why you don't wanna get stuck on your task one. It's 250 words and you should spend at least 40 minutes, yeah? Yes, so it seems like a lot, but actually 250 is a very short essay if you think about essays that people write at university. Yeah, so, um, so someone's asking about improving vocab. Improving your vocab takes time, but being curious about words is a big part of it. And someone said reading. Yeah, reading really helps to improve your vocabulary. You can also look online or in the app store for IELTS vocabulary games. That's kind of a fun way to improve as well. All right, so we're gonna talk about this together, even though the topics are slightly different, the method is the same. Okay, so let's just review what the examiner is looking at. Remember, they're looking at your, did you answer the question? Did you follow the instructions? Did you stay on the topic? They're looking at your structure. So you must have these paragraphs. You must have linking words. It must flow nicely. Then your vocab. Okay, so interesting words, unusual words, correct, more formal language. So the essay is never informal. The essay is more formal. Uh, and then your grammar. Okay, so again, looking at being correct, but also the range. And remember, it's the spelling as well and the punctuation, they also count. Okay, so we're gonna keep thinking about all this. Now, when you get your essay, it's divided usually into two parts. There is the topic, and then there are the instructions. Okay, so it's really important to understand how these IELTS topics work. So I'll show you. <clears throat> so here's the topic. International tourism has brought enormous benefit to many places. At the same time, there is concern about its impact on local inhabitants and the environment. So that's your topic, what you have to talk about. Yeah. So tourism, bringing benefit, but concern on about people and environment. And then your instructions, what do you have to do? Do the disadvantages of international tourism outweigh the advantages? So your instructions here is to think, do, are there more advantages or are there more disadvantages to international tourism? So there is a question here. 
Um, if you don't like the question, can you, what should you do? You, that's why you need to practice. The questions in IELTS essay, I mean, they're very common, the same topics come up all the time. So that's why we always say that it's a really good idea to start following the news. So this gives you ideas. You don't have to be some kind of expert or some kind of professor, but just be curious about what's going on in the world. It's actually good to know what's going on in the world, right? So, so follow the news. So many free news apps, BBC, The Guardian, excuse me, Voice of America, any of those. Because the topics that come up in IELTS are like this, tourism, health, the environment, uh, transport, all the major things that affect people. Um, um, climate, maybe uh, entertainment, uh, culture, mm, what else? Uh, trying to think, what else? Sports, sometimes, yeah, just business, not really so much. I mean, it, yeah, education, yes, education is a common one, that's right. Okay, and so these are your instructions. This is what you have to do. Do the advantages outweigh the uh, disadvantages? Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Inflation, government, it won't be about that. It won't be anything about politics or government or religion, nothing about that. Much more general, the topics. Okay, so let's look at a different topic. In many countries, very few young people follow the news. That's our topic that we have to talk about, young people and the news. What do you think are the causes of this? What can you suggest to encourage more young people to follow the news? So can you see here, these are our questions. How many questions do we have to answer here? Two, that's right. Okay, so all we do is follow the instructions. This is what we have to do for this, for this essay. All right, and then our other job with the essay is always the same. We always have to give reasons and examples. And that's why it's good to start following the news. So your examples can actually be from your life, it's fine. But it's also good to know what's going on in the world so you can use that as examples. You don't have to know numbers or facts, I mean, not facts, uh, statistics. You don't have to have all that, just generally what's going on. Okay, so let's look at the things that the examiners are looking at. Yeah, so task response, so answering the question. So we need to analyze the topic so we stay on the topic. Remember, we just looked at this one. In many countries, very few young people follow the news. What are the causes? What can you suggest to encourage more young people to follow the news? Now, there is something wrong with this in terms of answering the question. It is not true that people avoid reading newspapers or watching the news on television. In my country, most people do endeavor to find out about the news. But why do I believe this is so? Because I see newspapers everywhere, so there must be a demand for such publications. So this is, I'm telling you that this is not a good answer. Why? Contradicting. What do you mean by contradicting? Okay, what would our instructions? Remember, it's all about following the instructions. What do you think are the causes? What can you suggest? So this is arguing with the topic. Did it ask you here, what's your opinion? Do you agree? Did it ask you that? No, right? So this is not an opinion essay. So this will pull the score way down. Okay, so when you when it just follow what it tells you to do, it told you to think of the reasons and it told you to think of ways to encourage people. Yeah, it didn't tell you to argue with the point. So this would actually affect the score. Okay, so be very careful. Just follow the instructions. That's what I mean about staying on the topic. Follow the instructions. Yeah. Now I love this slide. Feel free to take a screenshot. I took this from a video from the IDP website, actually. So I really like this because even though there are many different IELTS topics, like we said, education, transport, health, um, the environment, all of that, there are the types of questions are often the same. Yeah, so here are some of the very common types. And then it tells you how many paragraphs are good. And then it gives you your structure what each paragraph should be about. 
This is really important under the cohesion and coherence. The second thing the examiner looks at, nice, clear structure. Yeah, so let's look at some of them. So here's one type of question. To what extent do you agree or disagree? This is an opinion one, isn't it? Asking your opinion. So here we'd have four or five paragraphs. You'd have your introduction. You'd say why, your position, like why you agree. So in your introduction, you would also say your position. Like I agree or I disagree. Then why would be one reason, another reason why you agree. Then you would could consider the other side and then the conclusion. So this is a very nice, clear structure. Here's another type, which we're going to look at in a minute. Discuss both views and give your own opinion. So this structure, we can have introduction, view one, view two, your opinion, conclusion. Very clear structure. Uh, and then here's another type. Why is this so? Reasons and solutions. Yeah, so introduction. So you first, this is a bit like the one we just looked at about the news, like why aren't people watching the news? So you give your reason, another reason, then you have your suggestions, why, what you can do about it, conclusion. So it's very clear. Ah, here's the one we just saw, right? Disadvantages and advantages of international tourism. Introduction and your position, what you think, more advantages, more disadvantages. Then you talk about the advantages, talk about the disadvantages, conclusion. And here's another one, another type. Why is it like this? What effect does it have on individual and society? So we have introduction, we talk about why, we talk about effect on individual, effect on society, conclusion. Yeah, so it's very clear. There, you don't, there's no maximum paragraphs. It's usually there are usually like four or five usually, but it's just so that your paragraphs are not too long. So about six lines is good, four to six lines, but also that it's clear what each paragraph is about. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at one of these types, one of those ones. This is a common type for both academic and general. Discuss both these views and give your own opinion. Yeah, so this is the instructions. Now, what's our topic? Let's have a look at the topic. Some people think that wild animals should not be kept in zoos. Others believe there are good reasons for having zoos. Okay, so discuss both these views. So view one is always introduced with some. Some people think wild animals should not be kept in zoos. So that's view one. Zoos, wild animals, no zoos, right? Now, view two is introduced with others. So others think zoos can be important. That's view two. And then your opinion. So you have to do three things in this essay. Talk about view one, reasons and examples. View two, reasons and examples, and your opinion. Maybe your opinion is a mixture, a bit of both, yeah? Okay, so let's have a look at, this is a very common type of essay that comes up for academic in general. So let's have a look at a model. Oh no, let's look at the structure first, sorry. So this is a good structure. Introduction, you can mention your opinion, but don't give any reasons. You can just say, I'm, you know, I mostly, I mostly think zoos are important or whatever. So we've talked about view one, reasons and examples. View two, reasons and examples. You can support either side or a bit of both. Usually I sort of sit in the middle. <coughs> then you have your opinion with some reasons. You have to give your reasons and then your conclusion. Yeah, so this one, you probably have five paragraphs. Why it is because. So if you wanna put uh, rhetorical questions in your essay, like you'll ask yourself a question, why? You can, I personally, I don't like it, but it's not wrong. If you want to do that technique, you can. Should the structure be view one, view two, your opinion, conclusion? Yeah, but you need an introduction. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it should be. So let's have a look at this essay. Now this essay got a band seven. So that means it's good, right? It's not perfect. And you will see some little problems in this essay if you look closely, but it means good. And in IELTS to get a band seven for writing is actually very good. Yeah, so it's, 
often they only ask for a band seven. Even if you need an eight on the other tests, they usually often ask you for a seven for writing. So this is kind of a good essay. One of the reasons it's good is the structure is really clear. So as we see here, there's the introduction, there's the view, uh, view one, but actually they talked about, we'll look at it in a second, then the view two, then their opinion and conclusion. So let's just have a quick look. We won't go in huge depth. Um, so the introduction, they just said a general statement about the topic. Wild animals are kept in zoos all over the world. See, there's a mistake already. At present, zoos are, are a tourist attraction in many countries and need wild animals to attract visitors. I believe that wild creatures should not be kept in zoos. Okay, so they're putting their position, their opinion there. But they haven't said why yet, no reasons. So here they're talking about, there are many good reasons for having zoos. This is the topic sentence. It tells you what the paragraph is about. So this is actually view two, isn't it? There are many good reasons for having zoos. Most importantly, they attract tourists and make money. So they're giving their reasons and then they expand like an example. Visitors get the chance to see wild animals they would not see. Yeah, zoos care for these animals. Yeah, so and then this is that's that's one side. Then view one, however, many people feel wild animals should be free. They should not be kept in cages. Okay, so then they're talking about the other side. Both views put forward valid points. However, whoops, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Are you all? Ah, here we go. Both views put forward valid points. However, I strongly believe zoos are no place for wild animals. If animals need to be cared for, they should be looked after in their natural habitat. Okay, so they're putting their opinion with reasons. And then finally, the conclusion. Although people believe zoos are good places to keep wild animals because they can earn money and educate people, I feel we do not need zoos anymore, should be free. Yeah, so this is a very nice, clear structure. Yeah, and they, they answered the question. Yeah. Okay, so someone's asking if the, if the, Oh, if you can put your view and your opinion together. Yeah, sure, you can do that. If you, as long as it's very clear that it's your opinion. Yep, you can combine it if you want. Yeah, there's many ways to do it. Yeah, there are lots of typos in this essay, which is why it didn't get a perfect score. Yeah, it's a, like, remember I told you spelling, we'll, we'll pull it down. So it can't get higher than seven. Now, another reason, if we think of cohesion and coherence, the second thing, yeah, so first of all, it answered the question and it has a nice clear structure. Next thing is it uses good linking words to make it flow. Okay, so it's not perfect, but there are some nice linking words. So at present, and, and is a linking word. Ah, them, what, why is this here? What is them referring to? I believe that wild creatures should not be kept in zoos and there should be alternative ways to see them. What's them? wild creatures that's right so instead of repeating wild creatures we use a pronoun them and that's considered good in ielts we want to do that it's called reference yeah so most importantly they instead of saying wild animals again unless for example remember we have to give examples yeah rare species like chinese panda or indian tiger or african rhino for example are endangered and if they didn't if we had no zoos, they would die. So that's an example, a nice example. See, the example can be quite short. It doesn't have to be a long story. You don't have enough words for that. Okay, therefore, however, because all these linking words make it flow. Also, both views put forward valid points. However, again, contrast, in conclusion, although, yeah. So these linking words are important to make it flow. What is the difference between view and opinion? View is actually the same, but view one is people's view, like what people think. So in this type of essay, first you have to argue the, for the view that, that uh, wild animals shouldn't be kept in zoos. Like you have to imagine that you believe that. So you have to think of your reasons and examples. Then you have to argue the other side. So you have to think that you, you know, you have to pretend that you believe this 
there are good reasons for having zoos and think of your reasons. And then you give your own opinion what you actually think, which could be a mixture of both. Okay, now let's look at a different type. So remember the two parts, some people say that living in a house is better than living in an apartment. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? So this is a different type, isn't it? So our topic is, I always say it in my own words so I understand. The topic is that house is better than apartment. Now our instructions are, to what extent do we agree or disagree? When we see this word extent, you have to think how much. So is it strongly agree, mostly agree, partially agree, strongly disagree? Okay, it should be somewhere on this spectrum. So I want to ask you now, so that's the first thing we have to do in this type of essay. We have to work out what we think. Do we think that it's house is better than apartment? So someone there, it says they extremely agree. We actually don't put extremely with agree. So I, I greatly agree, you could say, or I strongly agree. Where typos and grammar, okay, we're going to talk about that coming up. The, the vocab and the grammar, yeah. Fully agree, yeah. Be careful with fully agree because I always think it's good to argue the other side. You can if you want to, but it makes a stronger essay if you can argue both sides. If the question says only agree or disagree, then you can just agree or disagree. But if it's extent, then you should strongly, partially, mostly, yeah. Okay, good. So some of you partially agree, some of you strongly agree, but most of you seem to think house is better than apartment. <laughs> okay, so that's the first thing to do is get your position. Then we can think about our structure. So we have our introduction and we'll put our position in the introduction. So you will say, I mostly agree or whatever. Then you have to think of your reasons and examples. Why? Then I think it's good to consider the other side. I mean, there are some reasons why an apartment might be better. And then your conclusion. You can use we as a subject, we if you want to, but I don't, but who is we? It might be better to use I, because it's your opinion, isn't it? You could use we, it's not wrong. I just think it's a bit strange. It'd be better to use I. Okay, so can, so a lot of you said you agree that a house is better. What are your reasons? So the next thing we have to do is we have to train ourselves to brainstorm, to think of these reasons quickly so we can use them in the, in the essay. Before you write, try to spend maybe three minutes thinking of your reasons. So a lot of you said living in a house is better. Why? Please type in the chat. Why is it better? So you really need to train yourself to be able to think of your reasons. And usually you need three. Amenities, privacy, safer, yep, own land, yep, all of these are great, yep, yeah, all of these are great reasons. You, uh, get can develop, yeah, I mean, I think neighbours, you can also get become friendly with your neighbours in an apartment, can't you? More sociable maybe, yeah, that's true, you have a yard, can be more peaceful, okay, great. Now what about the other side? Even if you're just going to give one or two reasons why apartments can be better, why, why are apartments better? Not so much maintenance, yes. Uh, convenient, yeah, sometimes they have security. Yep, all these are very good. Our location can be better. Great, fantastic, thank you. So please train yourself to brainstorm your reasons like that because they will become your essay. So let's look at another model. So this one is a higher level one. This is maybe eight, could be 8.5. Um, okay, so let's analyze it a little bit. So the introduction, the person has said just like, kind of like a general statement and kind of paraphrased the topic. So everyone wants to live in comfort. Some people find independent houses more convenient while others prefer modern day apartments, okay? Now here's the position. I disagree that living in a house is more advantageous than living in an apartment. So this person disagrees, which is fine, but they put their position there, why? So the examiner knows, the examiner is looking for you, your position, make it easy for the examiner. So the examiner knows, oh, this person disagrees. So now we're gonna give the reasons and examples. To start with linking word, we are moving towards the culture of nuclear families where most adults work. 
life is more stressful than ever and people have less time on hand. Given these circumstances, it's much easier to manage an apartment. So that's the first reason, managing. For instance, so here's the example. Most apartments have housekeeping facilities that take care of all the cleaning, well, not all, but some do, and maintenance, uh, maintenance work, which we would have to manage ourselves if we live in the house. Okay, so here's another reason with a linker. Additionally, apartments are usually gated communities, so they are a lot more secure to exemplify. So here's an example. Most examples have access, uh, most apartments have access cards. Okay. And then the third reason, furthermore, apartments have some common facilities like recreational play area for kids. Okay, so the example will just expand and explain the reason. Yeah, one does not have to travel outside, results in a lot of time savings. So sometimes your example, you don't have to say, for example, you can just explain what you mean. But then the person is going to consider the other side. However, living in an independent house does have its own advantages. Okay, that's the topic sentence, what the paragraph is about. Uh, they are certainly more spacious and owners can freely utilize and modify the space for their convenience, which is hard to achieve in an apartment. Okay? And then conclusion, to conclude apartments and houses have their own set of pros and cons. However, I believe apartments satisfy the need of our modern lifestyle better. So just summarize, summing up everything in the last paragraph. Uh, this, this one, they say it's 8.5. Could be 8, could be 8.5, something like that. Yeah, I don't know if it was written in exam conditions also. So yeah. Um, okay, so can you see how it's done, the structure, and how the person has thought of good reasons and examples? Is it okay if you write more than one paragraph to explain each view? Yeah, that's fine. So with this one, there were because the paragraph got too long. So we had three reasons. He or she had three reasons why apartments are better. So put one in one paragraph and two in another paragraph. Totally fine. Okay. So let's look at one more. Every year, thousands of students go overseas to study. Although many benefit from the experience, others go home disappointed. What are the benefits and drawbacks of studying in another country? Okay, so this is our topic. Lots of students go overseas. Some have a good time, some have a bad time. How many things do we have to do in this essay? To exemplify means, for example, it's just another way of saying it. Uh, how many paragraphs, how many sentences in a paragraph? It's not, not like that. You don't have to be so mathematical about it. Just basically your paragraph should not be more than about eight lines long. Don't make them too long. Yeah, two things to do in this essay, benefits and drawbacks. Yeah, so someone is asking if you can use we. You can use we if you like to, but it's we is, a, is plural. So it's kind of strange because you're writing the essay. So personally, I think it's better to use I rather than we. We sounds a bit odd to me, but it's not wrong. You can use British or American spelling. Both are fine because it's international IELTS. Okay. Mm. All right. So let's think about the structure. So we have the introduction where we're going to paraphrase the topic. Then we have our benefits, reasons and examples, the drawbacks, reasons and examples, and conclusion. So nice, clear structure. Okay, someone's asking me about vocabulary. I'll talk about that a bit later, okay? Um, benefits and drawbacks. So the next step, remember, is to, is, is to uh, brainstorm. Remember, before we write, we have to think of our reasons. So can you think of some of the benefits? So in this type of essay, you have to talk about both. It's not asking you for your opinion. It's just telling you to talk about the benefits and the drawbacks. Okay, so you have to talk about both. So we have to think of three reasons for each. So what are some of the benefits of studying overseas? I see some coming up here. Networking, enhancing your CV experience, diverse peers, very, yeah, better job opportunities build connections, yes, cultural experience, independence, fantastic, all of those are fantastic. And what about the drawbacks of studying overseas? Expensive, yes, homesick, racism maybe, yeah, discrimination, 
all of those. Yep, culture shock. Yep. So these are, I also had these as well. Culture shock, discrimination, maybe you have distractions, benefits, exposure to other culture, independence, networking. Great. So now that's our plan for our essay. We can start writing. Yeah, so thinking about the paragraphs, we're going to have the introduction, the body paragraphs, and the conclusion. Yeah, so each, so the introduction, we will kind of paraphrase the topic, and sometimes we have to give our position if it's an opinion essay. The body, each paragraph, you need to have a topic sentence. It tells the examiner what the paragraph is about. Then you give your reasons and examples. And then conclusion, we just summarize everything. Okay, so let's have a look. So in this essay, this one that we're looking at now, this is how you, one way you could do the introduction. You can literally paraphrase. So every year, annually, thousands of students, a vast number of students go overseas, venture abroad, literally just changing the words. That's one way to do it all the way through. Okay, while many find their uh, time overseas to be greatly beneficial, others end up unsatisfied. So it's just rewriting the topic. That's one way. Another way is to sort of say a general statement about the topic. These days, it often seems that almost every second new graduate attained their qualification abroad. Many of these students find the study, study experience rewarding, but some are less satisfied. Okay. Now the body. So each paragraph we have the topic sentence, reason, and example. So here's the first, remember we did the brainstorm and the first benefit was exposure, right? So studying abroad offers students a number of benefits. That's my topic. I'm telling the examiner what the paragraph is about. Studying abroad offers students a number of benefits. Firstly, it facilitates exposure to new cultures. And then I expand. Students can immerse themselves in the lifestyle traditions of their host country and may also have the opportunity to discover the worldviews and cultural practices of fellow students from across the globe. Okay, so sometimes our example, we don't have to say for example, we just expand on our reason. Now another reason, in addition, being alone in an unfamiliar place and having to solve issues of day to day living can foster a strong sense of resilience and independence. That's the second reason. For example, negotiating rent transport and food will teach a young person valuable life skills. So you see the, the example is not a long story. The example just supports your reason. Okay, so I'm just giving two reasons here just because of time, but you probably would have a third reason as well. Then conversely, there can be several drawbacks. Here's my topic sentence saying what the paragraph's about. Several drawbacks to venturing abroad. One of these could be culture shock. That was one of my ideas, wasn't it? If a student finds themselves in a place of very different values. For example, if a young person has grown up in a relatively conservative or rural environment, studying in a liberal cosmopolitan city may be extremely jarring and negatively impact, the, impact their ability to study. So that's one reason. Further to this, so that's a linking word, introducing the next reason, dynamic for environment in a foreign location might lead to a distractions. That was my other reason, wasn't it? Yeah, and then explain, expand on that, yeah. And finally, the conclusion, you just kind of summarize everything in one paragraph. In conclusion, opting to complete tertiary studies abroad can offer increased exposure and opportunities to develop independence. It cannot be denied that overseas study can also lead to culture shock and many distractions. Each person needs to consider their own temperament and circumstances before making this life changing choice. Okay, so just summarizing everything. Um, you can, you don't, so someone's asking if you should have each reason in a separate paragraph. You don't have to. It depends how long your paragraphs get. Yeah, you can put two reasons into one paragraph. That's fine. That's totally fine also. Is that conclusion lengthy? Yeah, that my conclusion here is a bit long. But that's me. I'm a bit, bit long winded. Okay, so I wrote that essay and I tend to write a lot. So you can keep it shorter. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, okay, so we've talked a lot about analyzing the question, thinking of your reasons and your structure. So people keep asking me about the vocab. Yeah, so you do have to think about your spelling and using the, the right form of the word. 
We don't want to use slang like hubby, baby, honey. It's a more formal essay. Yeah, so um, we also want to be aware of this, what we call collocations, words that go together nicely. Okay, so I want to show you coming back to remember the band seven. So people are asking about the word limit. 250 is the minimum. There's no maximum, but be careful with your timing. So if you can write 300 words, that's fine, but you don't have to. And it's better to manage the time. So you don't need to write 500 words. Okay, so here's some nice, in terms of vocab, collocation means words that go together nicely. So alternative ways. This sounds nice together. Rare species educational importance. These all sound good in English. These two words sound correct when you put them together. Natural habitat. And they're a bit more unusual, these words. There's also a few other more interesting words, endangered, precious, cruel. Okay, so this, this is why this got a seven. Even though if we read through it, there are quite a few spelling mistakes and the spelling does affect the score. So it can't get a higher score because there are too many spelling mistakes. All right, and then when it comes to grammar, we also have to think about, remember complex? So well, it's being correct, but also complex. So what do we mean by complex? It's like combining your sentences. So we could say global warming is a phenomenon. It is caused by increased carbon emissions. Both those sentences are fine. But when we combine it into one longer sentence, it sounds more impressive. Global warming is a phenomenon caused by increased carbon emissions. Oh, sounds better, that sentence. Yeah, so how can you enhance and enrich your vocab? Um, there's so many websites, and it's not just websites, it's just reading, reading a lot of everything. But the BBC, BBC um, um, app is really good. The Guardian newspaper is really good also, if you want to read those kind of things. Yep, Voice of America. Yeah. Also, if you want to listen, you can watch TED Talks. Yeah. And a lot of it's being curious. And just use Google. You can Google IELTS grammar, sorry, IELTS vocabulary practice. And then you'll find lots of websites to practice with as well. Yeah. Okay. So the other part of grammar that we mentioned is watching out for mistakes. Yeah. So this essay. There are spelling mistakes, definitely, but there are also grammar mistakes and some of them are very common. So we're running out of time a little bit. So I'm, I'm gonna point these out to you. So what I should, if you think your grammar is not very good, like maybe your grammar is fine, but if your grammar is not the best, what I suggest you do is write an essay, show it to someone who has very good grammar, get them to point out your mistakes. You will find out that you have habits. Like maybe you always forget a uh and the. Maybe you always forget plural, like problems, you forget. Or maybe it's your tense, you forget past tense. Okay, so you learn what your common mistakes are. And then when you write the essay in the test, you check, you spend two or three minutes looking for your common errors. Yeah. Can you use Grammarly? You can't use it in the test. I mean, Grammarly is fine to use for your business writing, but you won't be able to use it in the exam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, subject and verb agreement mistake in the essay. Very good, you spotted it, excellent. So let's look at some of the common mistakes that are in this essay. They're common mistakes that a lot of people make. One of these little words that we use in English, uh, and the, all over the world, all the city, get a chance. So when it's a singular noun, it usually needs a or the in front, yeah? So there are lots of those errors here. Okay, so this kind of mistake, wild animals not at, in their country. Prepositions, these in, on, at, to. Plural, so news stories, not just one story, but many. So plurals, that's another thing. Then as someone pointed out, Tan Divo pointed out, because they are, not is. Yeah, so be careful, subject and verb must agree in English. Yeah, okay, so these are just some of the common errors. Now, just to summarize, if you are doing the paper-based test, you can 
make lots of notes on your on your question paper. Yeah, you can underline things and do your plan, do your brainstorm and your plan. Yeah, and when you actually write on the answer sheet, you can ask for more paper. So you don't have to squish it onto what they give you. You can ask for more. But you don't have time to do a rough draft. There's no time. You should brainstorm and think of your plan, your structure, but then just start writing. Try not to copy the topic. Try to use different words, synonyms. Okay, so we want, when you think of your reasons, make sure they're really relevant and not too, not too broad, like, like houses are good because they're nice. That doesn't really make sense. Or not too detailed, like houses are good because I can paint the wall any color. That's probably like too detailed. Yeah, so make sure your reasons are relevant. And then careful, it's not about telling long stories about your life. Your examples can be from your life, but they should just be short to support your reason. Okay, so when you write, you try to remember like all these things. Always analyze the, the question. How many things do I have to do? Is it two? Is it three? What are my instructions? Do I have paragraphs? Usually four, five, sometimes six. Do I have good linkers guiding the reader through? Spelling and and uh, vocab, good range of vocab, more complex sentence structures and punctuation, full stops, capital letters. So these are all the things to think about at the end. <clears throat> okay, so making mistakes with prepositions. This is why it's so great we have all these resources. You can just type in Google preposition practice, pre grammar preposition practice. And if you want, Grammar preposition practice for IELTS. Then you'll find tons of websites to practice your prepositions. Can you use capital letters to write the essay? Yes, if you want to write the whole thing in capitals, you can. Yeah. All right, so with just a bit of advice to sum up for the essay. So may, remember, this essay is worth 66%. So we want to spend most of the time on the essay. And don't get stuck on task one. So really analyze the question and think of your reasons and examples. So your examples can be from your life or general knowledge, like the ones we saw in the essay. So nice, clear paragraphs for the essay, a range of vocab. Um, yeah, spend time understanding how many things do I have to do? Discuss both views and opinion. Is it that or agree and disagree? What is it? using linking words. Now, if you run out of time, you cannot write in bullets or notes. You will lose marks. You must write in full sentences. Uh, and checking at the end, like I said, getting to know your common mistakes and looking out for those. Okay, so I, uh, IDP can help you. When you register to do your IELTS with IDP, you get access to IELTS Essentials, where there are lots of resources. Okay, so there, there's the official IELTS Essentials website, there's Facebook um, pr practice tests, there's a blog and support videos. Also, there are a lot of good materials on the IDP website and also the official IELTS website as well, which I'll just type in the chat, the IELTS.org. So all these will help you. Okay, so great. So we've got some time now for questions. Uh, and yeah, I hope that was helpful. And I'm sorry if I missed your question in the chat. I just really wanted to manage the time. But if I missed it, now you have a chance to ask anything you want. It's up to you. Anything about writing. Oh, should you write task one or task two first? So this is up to you. If you ask me, I prefer to do my task one first. Get it done. Make sure I do it in 20 minutes then focus on my essay. Because sometimes people do the essay first, but they, they lose track of the time. They only leave themselves 10 minutes for task one and then it, they'll do it badly. So it's up to you. You can do either order, but I prefer to do task one first myself. Up to you. Phrasal verbs are fine. You can use phrasal verbs in the essay. It's not considered informal. It's fine. It's not such a formal essay. Uh, which one would find given common examples or unusual ones? As long as your examples are relevant and support your reason, that's the most important thing. As we saw the examples in 
in the essay. So they were talking about like apartment is good because it has, you know, facilities. For example, it has tennis courts and swimming pool, that kind of thing. That kind of example is fine. Or living overseas teaches you independence. For example, you have to buy your own food and pay your rent. This is an example to support your reason. Yeah. How do you memorize the correct spelling of a word? Okay, so learning spelling, yeah, it takes time. So I would advise you to look on the App Store or Google Play and look for spelling games. That's the, that's the most fun way. And then, you know, work through some games which make it fun because spelling is just about drilling. Especially in English, there are so many exceptions, right? Actually, I'm going to stop my share so that um, we, yeah, I don't think we need that there. Um, let's see. After trying to complete some practice tests and not being able to reach the minimum number of words. Okay. I'm just reading what this person wrote. I think what the per what you wrote, Agatha, about just writing the answer with good reasons and then trying to refine it with better structure. Yeah, that's good. You want to you don't want to like get so obsessed with making a perfect sentence that you can't finish in time. It's more important to to because grammar and vocab are only part of it. It's also your reasons and your um, your structure, your overall structure. Yeah. So. You know, it does take time with writing. It takes time to build up your skills. Yeah. So, yeah, it also depends what band score you need as well. And sometimes with the writing, if you've tried the test a few times, you can't get the score, you might need to work with a tutor just to help you build up the skills. Or you might need to go back and spend some time working on your English. So it really depends. It's not a, like an instant, I can't, it's not like instant coffee. I can't just say do this and this and you'll get seven. It's like something you have to work out. If you think about how long it took you to learn your first language, it took at least eight years, right, to be able to speak quite fluently. <laughs> yeah, it, take, it just takes time. Yeah. So getting more ideas for your writing, that's like knowing what the common topics are and then reading and being curious about the world and listening. So listening to the BBC and then reading the news, that will give you enough ideas. You don't have to have every idea under the sun. Do you have to use third person point of view in the essay? No, you can say I, it's fine. In this essay, you can use I, you can use first person, it's totally fine. Okay, and remember that the topics are not like, like you'd have to be a specialist. You just have to be someone who is following the news and interested in what's going on in the world. That's all, and have opinions. Remember too that re getting ideas for your writing will also help you in your speaking, in your part three of the speaking. It's very similar. Yeah, so you're doing two in one by following the news and getting ideas and being curious about the world, that's gonna help you with your speaking as well. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, do we wanna, I don't know, I, I'm just happily talking. Are we gonna have live questions? <laughs> yes, I'm just waiting for you, Jackie. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm just like, no talk. problem. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, finally we can proceed on our live Q&A. So if you have any question, just raise your hand and then we will allow you to speak. Uh, but before that, for those who are taking on uh, the IELTS on computer test, uh, later after the live Q&A, if you have time, please stay with us and we will play some videos for you, tutorial videos for IELTS on computer. Yep. And all right, I think we can uh, start with Donna Franci. Hi, Donna. Hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, no. Uh, just wanna ask uh, for the IELTS test for the computer base because I was in the IELTS test on the paper base, so I just wanna know the difference between the paper and or and or computer base. Oh, okay. So, the, the, in terms of content, it's the same. It's just how mm -hmm. you're gonna do it. So it's all on computer. So. 
I mean, the, the listening test, you will have uh, headphones and you will type the answer as you listen, you type the answer in. Then reading, you'll read on the screen. So half the screen is, so you see these videos at the end of the session will show you quite clearly. So half the screen is the text and the other half you answer the question. And then the writing is you just type the answer. You don't have to save, it saves automatically. Oh. That's really, and then the way it works is that they will stop the program for that test and then start the next one. Yeah, so it's, it's one uh, continuous test still. Uh, if we do the, uh, the IELTS test by the computer based, so we can do the, uh, the test uh, from anywhere? Oh, no, at the moment, it's still um, you come into the center. Oh, okay. Still doing, in the center. doing it IELTS at home is something that's in development. So they are working on that. But, you know, there's a lot of security things to iron out with that. But it's coming. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Great question. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Next one is Alvik. Hi, Alvik Roda. Hi. No, when will be the next meeting? Next meeting. Oh, you mean the next session. So we have yes, our upcoming um, master class workshop. So master class uh, will focus on listening, reading, writing, and speaking. That will be on 18th of July. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the time, ma'am, on that day? It's the same. Uh, we'll begin from 6.30 in the evening, Singapore time, until 8.30 in the evening, Singapore time as well. Okay. Very good, ma'am. Thank you so much. So welcome. Uh, next, uh, can we have uh, Shadwina Dalimunte? Hi, Shadwina. Hello. Uh, uh, I will take the test uh, of IELTS computer based uh, next week. Uh, can you uh, <laughs> give me some uh, uh, reason that uh, will the others uh, the one that the IELTS takers uh, make some noise, uh, make a very big noise with the, their computer uh, keyboard. Uh, is it will distract the others? The other. Um, yeah, I think probably Lilette's in a better position to answer that than I am. Is it? I'm sure it's not noisy. Yeah. I don't. Right? Yep. Okay, I think uh, since we have representative from Philippines and Singapore, can we have your comment on that, please? Hi, Patrick. Regarding uh, the keyboard. I'm from Indonesia. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any representative today from Indonesia, but just to share uh, their, uh, yeah, their experience with test takers who are having trouble with IR keyboard while taking the IELTS on computer. Hi, Patrick. Um, can you rephrase the question? Uh, maybe the noisy, the noise that the others made when the writing session is begun. Uh, is, uh, I think that will distract the other IELTS takers. Yeah, here in the Philippines, some of the invigilators allow the test taker to wear their headphones while the writing test is um, doing because, yeah, some of our test takers are also having a hard touch while doing the keyboard. And I'm not sure with Indonesia if they're doing the same thing like here in the Philippines. Uh, can you uh, can you ask to the someone from Indonesia maybe or to make sure it is not happen and somehow uh, then the big noise the noise uh, that uh, will distract us and make our concentrate is yeah, you know, it's hard to uh, think in the noise environment. Uh, sure, should we now? Uh, we definitely we will inform our IDP Indonesia about it. And just uh, for your information as well, if there are cases like that, definitely the invigilator and the test day supervisor will attend to you right away. And actually what Patrick shared is one good thing that you can also ask in case they won't offer it to you right away. So you can tell them if you can uh, just simply wear your headphone while, uh, while taking your writing uh, IELTS part. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe I want to ask another question about the uh, reading session. Uh, can I uh, start the question from the very last part first, and then to the uh, the the 
the the the the, yeah, the others. Did you say? Did you say reading? The reading. The reading in the reading. Uh, yeah, you I, can start. You can start with the hardest part if you want to, but I wouldn't advise you to do that because um, in the reading test it gets harder, right? So you would want to get your more points when it's easier. So I wouldn't suggest you start with the hard part. Start with the easy part so you get more more chance of getting it correct. Mm, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For and then yeah, but with the reading test you have to manage your time very carefully because you have to read and answer the questions within one hour yeah okay thank you thank you so much so, for the answers so. thanks shadina next uh let's have kuang hai pam hi kuang hai um, hello uh so so do you hear me hi. yes 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 okay, okay i have a question from for the teacher it's about that um because i uh, I will have tests on, uh, I think it is next two weeks. So it's very short time. And um, because it's my vocabulary is not very, not very like a very fancy, I don't have much time for that. So during the writing, if I use the other words uh, instead of the dry and good and beautiful word, so do you think that how, how many the scores are? It will be what score it will be for uh, that? Yeah, it's really hard to say because remember that there are four things that the examiner yes. is looking at. It yes. also depends what band score you need. Yes. So I don't know what what band score you 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 need. I never I never attend the the test before, so this this is most likely at this time that I need it's five point five. Five point five. Okay, so five point five. You don't need such complex you don't need such sophisticated grammar oh sorry okay. vocab you just okay. need vocabulary that is correct okay and that is as long as you can get your basic meaning across yeah okay. it's only if you want seven or higher that you need all this very sophisticated vocabulary okay yeah. so yeah okay. so i wouldn't worry so much about it as long as it's, <laughs> it's basically correct vocab yes. Yes. Yeah, then it's, yes. no, it's thank you very much. 5.5 is not such a high score. So, that's ah, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Kuang. Now, can we have a uh, Phil Joseph Cantor? Hello, good evening from the Philippines. Good evening. Hello, Hi. Jacqueline. I have a question. Yes, sure. you showed us earlier a um model like we have to follow or a certain structure that we have to follow for the paragraphs and i would like to ask a question in regards with the format that you gave us uh, in regards to the question type of why is this so give reason for this and solutions um after the introduction well, what examples uh can we can we uh what they call this can we write in the number two, which is the reason why it is so. Are we going to explain what you're trying to mean in this? Sorry, oh, uh, sorry. Wait, which uh, topic were you referring to? The one about the news? Is that the one you meant? Uh, oh, in, in general, I'm talking about in general, if we ever uh, come up or face this type of question. Oh, so when they the why ask is you, this so why is it so? Yeah, then you yeah. just have to think of reason. So, so for example, if we think about the, the one about the news, why, yeah. uh, why are young people not, not following the news? So this is where we do have to brainstorm. So you have to think, um, you know, maybe they don't think it's relevant to them. That could be one reason. Uh, maybe they, in, sorry? I'm sorry, yeah, go on. Maybe they're, maybe, you know, there are too many other distractions, that's yeah. one thing, or maybe, I don't know what's another reason why young people aren't following yeah. the news and then after that paragraph yeah, yeah i understand after that paragraph are we going uh is it good that we're going to add another paragraph for the reason or we'll have to go directly to the solution oh okay so re problems and solutions there's two ways you can do it you can put all your reasons together in like one okay. paragraph or two paragraphs and then all your solutions together or mm. if you prefer, some people prefer you give a reason and solution together. Then you give another oh. reason and solution together. It's up oh, to yeah. you. 
Exactly. You can do exactly. either way. Either way is fine. As long as it's, and also all the things I told you today, it's just one way of doing it. Okay. It's, it's not like you have to do it that way. As long as it's logical, as long as it makes sense, you can have your own structure. Yeah. Definitely. The, okay. the way that I, what I was giving you is just one way that is clear. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Thanks for your question. Thanks. So now uh, let's have Sylvia Fabiani Karuna. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Miss. Thank you for Hello. the opportunity. So I don't know if you've read this before. Uh, I, I, I actually asked it from the chat, but probably you missed it. So in writing task two, sometimes I find people writing uh, in I, in this essay, I will discuss about blah, 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 something like that for any types of questions. Like, right, let's say the question is, to, to what extent do you agree or disagree? And then the intro contains something like, in this essay, I will discuss about the reason why I blah, blah, blah I, I agree or the reason why I disagree. Is it okay? Or okay, is it so better to use yeah. a more direct yeah. sentence like, I personally, I b believe? Well, that. yeah, so there are different schools of thought about that. So uh, if your English is not so great, and, and maybe you need like a band six or maybe a 6.5 or something, then that is kind of like a template that a lot of people use. And it's okay, but it's not that exciting. So that's why I didn't use it here because it's, it's uh, I don't know, it, it's all right, but I don't think it's necessary to spell it out so much. It's like yeah. it's too stiff. It's a bit too contrived, sort of. But mm. it's okay. It's okay if that if you're taught to do it that way and you feel comfortable. I mean, it is quite clear. But you don't need to say that. Yeah, mm. You can just say, "I I agree." You know, you don't have to say in this essay, "I am going to." Do, do, do. Mm. So it's like better to use direct, the, a more direct uh, mm. opinion. It's not it's not wrong to do it the other way. It's just mm -hmm. not, a lot of people do it that way. So it's a little bit, a little bit boring, you know? If you do it the other way, it's a little bit more, I don't know. It's a bit more natural somehow, I, I think. Yeah. But it's not wrong to do it the other way either. Okay, thank you, miss. <laughs> it's just a lot of people have been, been to courses and have been taught and they write like a template. And yeah, that's only, why I okay, found it. It's weird. fine, but you won't get a really high score that way. You might even be able to get a seven writing like that, but you, you can't really get a very high score like that. Okay, Miss, thank you. Oh. Thanks, Sylvia. And next one is uh, Lai Nguyen. Hi, Lai. It's actually Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I was just wondering if there is a uh, cutoff point where an essay is considered too long. For example, is 300 words uh, going to be too long for task two, for example? And I, I was wondering if uh, we are going to be marked, uh, have a, we are going to have a lower score because the essay is too long. Yeah, so that's a great question. No, there's no upper limit. So, I mean, you could write 500 words, but I wouldn't advise it because first of all, there are more likelihood of mistakes the longer you write. Uh, but if you can write 300 words in the time, then that's fine. And it might make your essay stronger if you can do that, but you don't have to. But if you want to and you can, sure, there's no upper limit. But also just remember the examiner. They have to, they read so many papers. If yours is 500 words long, they're like, oh, God. you know what I mean? It's not so nice yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. But they, they can't mark you down for it. They, they will not mark you down for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if okay. you, I think, you know, up to 300 words is fine. It's totally fine. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Next, let's move on to Christine Jonathan. Hi, Christine. Hi, thank you, Miss, for the lesson. Uh, I would like to ask about the maybe uh, the time reminder. Is there any time reminder? And then the second one, uh, because when we do the writing, we we will not count how many words we already type in. So, is there any like word 
count, uh, automatic word count that will remind us uh, it's still not 250 words or maybe blah, blah, blah. Yeah, thank you. I forgot to talk about that tonight. Always so many things to talk about. So yes, if you do your tests on computer, there is a clock that counts down. So you know exactly how much time you have. There's also a word count. So you see how many words you've written. If you do paper-based, there will be some kind of clock or a time keeping device in the room. So they'll count down the time manually. But paper-based, there's no word count, but you shouldn't count words in the test. You should just, if you're doing paper-based, work out how many words you put on one line and then work out how many lines you need to write. So you don't waste your time counting words in the test. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, Miss. Oh, that's a good question. Thanks so much. And then next is Shireen Arun Jasmine. Hi, Shireen. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm doing the uh, paper-based test. So I would like to know if like, if there will be an invigilator in the room uh, you know, when we are taking the test and would give us a reminder or something like that about the time and ask us to move to the next section or something like that because, you know, it's not computer-based, right? So, yeah, so, so as I just mentioned, with the time, even if you do paper-based, they will count down the time for you. Like either there'll be a clock that you can see or they will cross off like, you know, the countdown how much time you have left. Um, but they will not control, they will not tell you to move from task to task. You have to manage that yourself. Yeah. So you have to manage like 20 minutes task one, 40 minutes task two. Uh, no, like not like that. Like, you know, there are like four sections, right? Like uh, listening, reading, writing. Oh, the different uh -huh. tests are like a run separately. So you finish oh. one test, you do it all together. It's not like you can move at a different pace from everybody else. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you do listening, everybody does listening, listening finishes. Then you move on to reading like that. So how, like for the listening, will it be like each one would be provided separate headphones to listen or like, will it be just played uh, to everyone uh, in common and we will listen to it and we have to write the answers? So this depends where you're doing your test. So I think mostly for IDP, please correct me if I'm wrong, mostly it's through headphones for IDP. Is that right? Pa even paper-based? Yes, that's right. So in Philippines, Singapore, uh, Vietnam, and Thailand, uh, for the IELTS on paper, they are providing headphones for the listening test, even if you will take an IELTS on paper. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, uh, and I think so. just to add on about the uh, time or the reminder, all right. So for the IELTS on paper, generally for the listening, uh, you will just listen and everyone will follow. So once the recording has stopped, then you will be give, given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. And then after that, there will be an announcement, stop writing. Then instruction followed by the reading component, reading skill, and then you will be given 60 minutes and that will be announced. You may begin your reading now, your reading test now. And then after that, you will uh, hear a reminder, like uh, I think uh, 40 minutes after the session begin. So after 20 minutes, you will hear like 40 minutes left. And then after that, uh, 40 minutes before, uh, 20 minutes before the end, you will hear another announcement, 20 oh, minutes. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. Aside from the timer that will be available, there will be a clock and a timer as well. It could be in a projector or anything that the test center will provide or test venue provides. Yeah, okay, okay. So thank same thing you. for the writing part. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then uh, next one will be Dora. Dora Vijayanti. Hello. Hello. Hello Hi, Dora. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, I already took a test one month ago, and I just get the result of IL test, and my band score I think is bad uh, under my target. I mean, and. Uh, in writing, I got a 5.5, uh, and I have a plan to take uh, the test uh, soon because I want to apply for scholarship. Uh, could you give me a advice how to increase my 
band core, especially in writing, in two weeks. So <laughs> what what the best way I can do to reach band? Maybe uh, it's six to five. Or... Uh, well, first you need to find out why you're not getting the band. So you only have two weeks. I really think you probably need to find a tutor to help you because unless you know what you're doing wrong, it's like then to fix it, I mean, you're, you're not really sure. Unless you saw from this webinar, oh, I was doing it wrong. Unless you know from this webinar that, oh, I wasn't doing it the right way. But it, it usually, sorry to say this, I don't mean to, you know, <laughs> give you bad news, but it usually takes longer than two weeks to move up half a band, unless it's just because you don't understand the way that the test works. But if it's your grammar and your vocabulary, I mean, think about learning a new language. It's not, like I said before, it's not instant coffee. So, yes. yeah. but if it's not that, if it's just the fact that you weren't answering properly or you weren't structuring your essay properly, then potentially you can change it very quickly. So what I would suggest is you find a tutor to work with you now because you've got such a short amount of time. And then that person will be able to tell you what you need to do to improve. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> okay. To get a tutorial. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I think on the IDP website, they have some links to like schools that are affiliated with IDP. So you may be able to find a tutor through the IDP website. Oh, uh, for private maybe, right? Uh, that also, yeah, but they have like some affiliations with school, with like, you know, IELTS preparation schools. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. So, sorry, I don't mean to be <laughs> okay, bad yeah, news. I <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, I think last question for the night uh, from Aksa Marlan. Hi, Aksa. Uh, hello, sorry. Uh, I have a question uh, about how to boost uh, IELTS writing score from 7 to 7.5 or 8, for example. Is there any specific trick uh, that, uh, that we'll do in order to boost your score? Okay, so seven is good, right? Seven is a good essay. Then eight is very good. So it, I don't know if you remember the ones that I showed you. So the one we looked at about the zoos, that was a band seven. And then the one that we looked at, at about the houses, you know, the house or flat, that was a higher level. So it's that kind of difference. In all the four areas, you have to just be a lot more sophisticated and fewer errors. And then when it comes to your reasons and examples, they have to be very relevant to get an eight. I mean, when you think about it, a nine is perfect. So eight is just a few little mistakes. Yeah, so it's quite a jump from a seven to an eight. And then a 7.5 means that in some things you're seven and some things you're eight. Yeah, so what I advise you to do is think about what you're good at. So maybe you have really good vocabulary. So then really push that and, you know, make sure in the essay you pull out all your impressive words. And maybe you're very good, th good at thinking about reasons and, you know, examples. So you really work on that. And then if you know your, perhaps your grammar is not so good, then, then that, if you're getting 7.5, that could stay at seven. Do you know what I mean? The, the two that are easier to change are your answering the question and your structure. Task response and cohesion and coherence. It's easier to go up a band in those. So maybe really focus on that. Okay. okay. And, and I would advise you to look at models, models that are considered you know, very good ones and work out, analyze them, work out what they've done. And then you try to do your version. Yeah, but again, there's no quick, it's not like, oh, just do this and that's it. I wish there yeah, were. I would, I would be really rich if there, <laughs> if there was, but it's not. Okay, okay. What is more challenging is actually how to find a, I mean, uh, the right collocation because uh, when it comes to writing class two, I mean, we need to, uh, what is that? We need to be, I mean, you, we need to have a, a grasp understanding of a wide variety of topics don't we 
because mm, yeah the, which word collocate with some words so it's kind of challenging when it's come for example to a certain topic so you might be well first about it but uh yeah, when that, you, that you come across um, yeah. another topic you might find it quite challenging so yeah, yeah. That's true. But when I listen to you speak, I think like, you know, you obviously have a good range. So there is an element of luck, like sometimes you get a topic that you know a lot about, and you have a lot of vocabulary for. So another thing you can do is, uh, again, out there online, you can just Google IELTS collocation practice. There are lots of websites devoted to helping you practice your IELTS vocab. So try that. And then that'll help as well. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. I got some, I received uh, three times IELTS in IDP and I stuck in seven in writing. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, honestly, it is hard to get higher than a seven in the writing. It is quite hard. I mean, it's, and then, so then again, maybe you might need to work with a tutor too. It's not that your English, so your English is already good, but you want to push it. You might need to work with someone who can really advise you. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. That's something to think about, yeah. Yeah, but seven is okay, a great it. score. Seven is a good score for writing, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Get an eight is really, yeah, quite challenging. In, in yeah, um, sometimes I want to try to challenge myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Challenge yourself. Better. Go for it. <laughs> wow. Well, thanks for it. Sure, sure. Thanks for your question. All right. Thank you so much, Asa. And I think that's all for tonight. Thank you so much for staying with us for more than two hours now. Uh, uh, once again, Jackie, thank you for your time and for sharing your knowledge with all the participants today. And to my co-host and co-moderator, Patrick and Sarah, thank you for answering all the questions in the chat box as well as in the Q&A section. And before I play the videos for IELTS on computer, any final word, any final advice from you, Jacqueline, for oh. our test takers? Oh, I just want to thank you all for, for staying here this evening over this time and all your great questions and your interest and for being so interactive. It's really great. And of course, I want to thank the wonderful IDP team who always rock. So thanks so much for supporting all of this. And I really wish you all the best with your IELTS and may your IELTS dreams all come true as well. Yeah, and take care out there. Still germs are flying around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Take care everyone and best wishes. All right, let me just share my screen. Welcome to our computer delivered IELTS tutorial one. This tutorial will show you how to complete and prepare for computer delivered IELTS. For each section, there's a clock at the top of the screen, which tells you how much time you have left. For the reading and writing tests, the clock will turn red and flash.